Assalamu alaikum all. Can you hear my voice? Can you hear me? Okay. Now, before starting our virtual session, as one of my students asked about project, if you remember, I have told you that until midterm, you have to do blackboard assignments, and after midterm exam, we will give you one project. And that project you have to do in a group of two students. You remember that? Yes? So that, uh, that project is cancelled. Okay? Now we will not give you any project. Rather, you have to stick with your Blackboard assignment. That's why I have told you to submit your assignment of week 10. Okay, otherwise we must have given you a project. Now as far as assignment of week 7 is concerned, where you have to submit a project that is 7.2, okay, that assignment you have to submit, although it is a project-based assignment, but you have to do it. It is on Blackboard. So don't get confused with the project that we have talked before. Earlier, we were t telling you that after midterm exam, you need not to do blackboard assignments. We will give you one project. That project you have to submit. Okay? So that project is cancelled. But you have to do week 7 assignment, 7.1 and 7.2 both. Now, doubt is clear? Now, before discussing the new topic that is network devices and virtual LAN and IPv4 addressing, I want to discuss the midterm exam question. In this question, there was confusion. Uh, this is your true and false question, question number four. That is, infrared is a wireless communications medium that uses light waves to transmit signals or information. So, yes, you have to do objective one. Yes, Seham. You have to do objective one of assignment 7.2. That is completely subjective. Just you have to mention which topology you should use and according to a given scenario, which topology you should prefer. And in support of your answer, you have to give proper reasons, okay? Which wiring scheme should be used, how you can interconnect those buildings together, and what cable should be used. So this thing, this is just subjective. So based on the concepts that you have learned so far, just you have to mention, according to you, which one is suitable and why. Uh, now, in this true and false, okay, the answer is true, because if you remember, uh, transmission media, when we discussed about transmission media, we have seen that there are two types of transmission media. One is guided that is wired, and another is unguided, that is wireless. So in wired media, we have twisted pair cable, we have coaxial cable, we have fiber optic cable. So that was for wired media. Now here you can see what is written. Wireless communication. So we cannot say fiber optic because fiber optic is wired communication. It is not wireless. So the question is, infrared is a wireless communication medium. Yes, it is true. That uses light waves to transmit signals or information. Yes, it uses light waves to transmit signals or information. So that's why it is true. It is not false. Yes. Any query? Yes, what about 9? So, in question number 9, you have in CSMACA, random access method collision is avoided. Now, here it is just asked whether collision is avoided or not. It is not said fully avoided or partially avoided. 
it is not said like that in cs msca collision is avoided yes or no yes collision is avoided so the answer is true it is not false it should be true uh, yes fatima uh, in diagram infrared before light see one thing i want to share with you what do you think infrared is what infrared is what infrared is a light exactly yes it has light waves it transmits information and it uses light waves so frequency is different obviously according to the frequency spectrum which is which is given in your book different we have different frequency spectrums for different wireless media okay for microwaves for infrared waves we have different frequency spectrum but infrared also uses light waves and it is a wireless communication medium so the answer is true but the diagram put it before light see we have different types of lights it's not like that we have just one type of light see some lights are visible some lights are invisible some lights are visible and some are invisible so infrared also uses light the different types of lights okay you were confused because of that no problem now see this infrared is a wireless communication yes it is a wireless communication and it uses light waves to transmit signals yes so the answer is true it will be true yes any other question last question when the deadline for project and week 8 assignment see for week 7 assignment i have told you that you, i have made an announcement also that you have to submit it by the end of week 9 week 9 is over now this is week 10 so that's why i have told you please submit it as soon as possible means within one or two days but still if you need time you can submit it by saturday okay by the end of week 10 please submit your assignment of Yes, we you have submitted seven point one, but seven point two is still pending. So su submit your week seven assignment completely, seven point one and seven point two by the end of week ten. Yes, still seven point two is left. Submit it by Saturday. Okay, now let's start. so today first of all we will discuss about network devices so these network devices are basically the connecting devices which are used to connect hosts together to make a network or to connect networks together to make an internet so these connecting devices operate in different layers of internet model and here we see the three layers physical layer data link layer and network layer so in physical layer we have repeater and hub in data link layer we have bridge and switch and in network layer we have router and firewall now we will discuss them one by one when we talk about hub it is a device that operates only in the physical layer so signals that carry information within a network can travel a fixed distance before attenuation and endangers the integrity of the data now the next is repeater the function of repeater is to receive a signal and before it becomes too weak or corrupted it regenerates and retimes the original bit pattern the repeater then sends the refresh signal now in the past when we were using ethernet lans and those ethernet lans were using bus topology a repeater was used to connect two segments of a lan to overcome the length restriction of the coaxial cable 
But today we are using Ethernet LAN that uses star topology. So in a star topology, a repeater is a multi-port device. And sometimes it is also called hub that can be used to serve as the connecting point and at the same time function as a repeater. Now we have data link layer where we have bridge and switch. Switch is also called link layer switch and it operates in both physical and the data link layer. So it is not like that that it operates only in the data link layer rather it operates in both physical layer as well as data link layer. So as a physical layer device it regenerates the signal it receives. And as a link layer device, the link layer switch or simply we can say switch can check the MAC addresses that is source and destination contained in the frame. And as far as bridges are concerned, they are used to increase the bandwidth and uh, to handle the collision domain. At the network layer, we have routers and firewalls. A router is a three-layer device. So it operates in the physical layer, in the data link layer, and in the network layer. So as a physical layer device, it regenerates the signal it receives. As a link layer device, the router checks the physical addresses, that is source and destination contained in the packet. And as a network layer device, a router checks the network layer addresses. So a router can connect networks, or we can say a router is an inter-networking device. It connects independent networks to form an inter-network. So according to this, two networks connected by a router becomes an inter-network or an internet. Now, when we talk about network, there are two possibilities. Either we have to connect like devices, that is same devices, or unlike devices, that is different devices. So if we have to connect unlike devices, like PC to hub, or PC to switch, or switch to firewall, or switch to router, in that case, we will use straight through cabling. And if we want to connect like devices, same devices together, like PC to PC, switch to switch, router to router, firewall to router, then in that case, we will use crossover connection. Now next we have virtual LANs. So a virtual local area network is basically uh, a local area network which is configured by software, not by physical wiring. So there are three types of configurations. We have manual, we have automatic and semi-automatic configurations. It has frame tagging and IEEE 802.1Q. So when we see uh, virtual LAN, the whole idea behind virtual LAN technology is to divide a LAN into logical instead of physical segments. So a LAN can be divided into several logical LANs, which we call as VLANs, that is virtual LANs. And each VLAN is a work group in the organization. So suppose uh, if a person moves from one group to another, there is no need to change the physical configuration. The group membership in virtual LAN is defined by software, not hardware. So any station can be logically moved to another virtual LAN. All members belonging to a virtual LAN can receive broadcast messages, which is sent to that particular VLAN. 
This means that if a station moves from VLAN 1 to VLAN 2, it receives broadcast messages which are to be sent to VLAN 2, but no longer receives broadcast messages sent to virtual LAN first. So this is a good configuration for a company with two separate buildings. Each building can have its own switched LAN and which is connected by a backbone. So people in the first building and people in the second building can be in the same work group even though they are connected to different physical LANs. So we can see that VLAN defines broadcast domain and VLANs group stations belonging to one or more physical LANs into broadcast domains. So the stations in a virtual LAN communicate with one another as though they belong to a physical segment. Now next we will talk about IPv4 addressing. And IPv4 address is a 32-bit address that uniquely and universally defines the connection of a host or a router to the internet. The IP address is the address of the connection and it is not uh, the host or the router because if the device is moved to another network, the IP address may be changed. So IPv4 addresses are unique in the sense that each address defines one and only one connection to the internet. If a device has two connections to the internet, via two networks, it has two IPv4 addresses. So IPv4 addresses are universal in the sense that the addressing system must be acceptable by any host that wants to be connected to the internet. So IP addresses are logically divided into two parts. We have network address and host address. So if you see this example, 1, 2, 3, 4, some street. So some street is the network address and 1, 2, 3, 4, it is the host address. Now we have subnet mask also. Subnet mask basically indicates the demarcation, the distinction between network address and the host address. So first of all, there's a decimal to binary conversion, as you can see. In order to convert 255 to binary, the corresponding binary conversion will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 8 bits. And all those 8 bits are 1. Now for 128, it will be 1 and the rest are 0. For 127, it will be 0, rest are 1. For 10, it will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And for 3, it will be the first 6 bits will be 0, the rest 2 bits will be 1. And the next is binary ending. Now, if we add 1 and 0, 1 plus 0, it is 0. This is ending. This is ending. So here there is a mistake. There is a mistake over here because this is binary ending. Instead of plus, it should be multiplication. It should be multiplication. So 1 into 0 is 0. That is false. And 1 into 1 is 1. That is true. So here you have to make changes. You have to make correction over here. So this is the Boolean operator that we are using. It is this one because this is ending. So it will be this Boolean operator. 
now uh, you have to remember this table 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 and 120 because it will be easier for you to convert any uh, binary number into its decimal equivalent so it will be easier for you if you will remember this 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 256 and so on now we will see the network address first of all convert the ip address and the subnet mask to binary i will give you an example also first of all see the steps the first step is convert the ip address and the subnet mask to binary okay just make conversion then the second step is look for where the subnet mask turns to all zeros okay the subnet mask turns to all zeros this is the end of the network address and then complete the process of binary ending to determine the network address so these are the three steps now it will be clear if we will see an example see this example here the ip address is 10.1 dot 11 dot 56 slash 8 now slash 8 means that first eight bits will be one first eight bits will be one now when first eight bits will be one it means that it will be 111111 six bits 7 8 and rest are zero so it will be dot 0 dot 0 and dot zero so this is binary now convert it into decimal so just now i have shown you this table it, it will be better if you will remember this so this will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 32 and 128 now add them up 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 you will get 255 you will get 255 so now we have 255 over here instead of binary we will have a decimal value 255.0.0 dot zero, dot zero, and dot zero so this is same now see this here we have 10 so this 10 is converted to binary when you will convert it to binary how much you get you will get 00001010 this is 10 then dot 1 so convert this one to binary you will get seven zeros then the last digit will be 1 and you have dot 11 dot 56 now you see this is 10 this subnet mask this is 1 so the network address will be 10 okay and the rest bits are 0.0.0.0 see dot .0, see, dot .0, dot .0, dot .0 so here you have 1 in the ip address you have 1 you have 11 you have 56 now if you will perform ending operation obviously anything which is multiplied by 0 is 0 so network address will be 10.0.0.0 is this clear or shall i repeat it again this point is clear or not finding the network address this is clear good what about others okay So let's proceed further. 
Now this time we have IP address and it is 10.1.11.56 and slash 16. Now slash 16 means the 16 bits will be 1. So you know that in one octet we have just 8 bits. So we have 8 bits in first octet, we have 8 bits in second octet and then 0 and 0. So when you will convert 8 bits into decimal, you will get 255 and 255. So here we have 255.255.0.0. Because here we have 16. 16. Now convert the IP address into binary. You will convert 10 to binary. You get four zeros one zero one zero so you have binary equivalent of 10 then the binary equivalent of 1 will be seven zeros and the last digit will be 1 now 11 convert 11 to binary you will get zero 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 one zero one one this is the binary equivalent of 11 and dot 56 dot 56 now you can see over here in case of subnet mask the first octet is 1 second octet is 1 the third octet is 0 and this is 0 now when you will perform a boolean operation okay, you will perform boolean ending operation so perform boolean operation between these two you will get 10 when you will perform boolean operation between 1 and 255 okay, this is 1 same and the rest will be 0 because here we have 0 so the network address will be 10.1.0.0 so these are the three steps by which we can find the network address and we have seen two examples also so this is the table that we have used now finding the subnet ranges the subnet ranges increment according to the decimal value of the last one bit of the subnet mask. For example, we have 10.1.0.0 slash 20. So slash 20 means we have a subnet mask of 255.255.240.0. How? Because it means that it should have 20 ones. It should have 20 ones. So what we will do, the first 8 bits are 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. This is the first octet. Then dot. Again 8, one, eight ones. 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So how many ones we have? 16. Total how many ones? We have 16. Now, how many ones we want? We want 20 ones. So, it's still 4 ones are left. Now, in the next octet, the first 4 bits will be 1. First 4 bits will be 1. And the rest will be 0. 0, 0, 0, 0. And dot, all 8 bits will be 0. Eight bits will be zero. Okay. Now you can convert it into decimal. When you will convert these ones into decimal, you will get two fifty five. Now convert it into decimal because all eights are ones. I have told you how to convert it. See this one. See this one. We have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and 128. Add them up. 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. You will get 255.
Now, here also you will get 255 because we have all eight ones. Now, next is convert this into decimal. So, you will get 240. You will get 240 and the last is 0. So, that means it will be 0. So, these are the subnet ranges. We start from 10.1.0.0 and then we have 10.1.15.255. Okay. And then from 0 to 15, it is 16. Now, now we will start from 16 to 31. Okay. Then next we will start from 32 to 47. So the difference will be 16 and so on. So there's an important rule that the number of usable IP addresses for a subnet or a network can be found according to this formula that is 2n minus 2 where n equals the number of bits in the host address portion of the subnet mask. So we have 255.255 and dot one 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 one. Then rest are zeros. This point I will explain you in class because for this uh, I have to give you some examples also so this point this the la this rule i will explain you in class with the help of suitable examples it will be more clear if we will be in class face to face so until now until here is it clear we have discussed ipv4 addressing we have discussed about virtual lens and we have discussed about network devices. Is it clear? If you have any question, you may ask. Okay, clear. So we still have time. If if you want to ask anything, I am here only and inshallah we will meet in next face-to-face -face lecture next week. Till then, take care all of you. Asalaamu Alaikum.